Welcome to the video lecture series, Culture, Worldview, and Origins. We're Tim and Holly Nyquist. This is part two, and this is the second lecture of part two. Part one was on the Western concept, using the Western cultural tendency to build a house of, of, of understanding the world. What we're doing now is moving on to using a non-Western uh, cultural concept of building a thinking process of how to understand the world. What we, st what we built with in the, the first lecture was the foundation. The foundation sits on the ground, ground zero of the culture, the Weltbild. And the culture is what gives a, a, a tendency of, of thinking of acting. You know, when, when we've visited different cultures, uh, right away getting off the transportation, whether it be the plane or, or, or ship or bus, is that you, you realize right away that you've arrived into a new world, a different world, a different culture. And um, they, they think differently. Things happen differently. They perceive things differently. And so this is what we've included in the thinking processes, is that particular um, view of the world in that that's the Weltbild from the the German concept and so that is the ground zero the ground zero then produces a uh, a way of of choosing a source of reliable knowledge and in this case number one the source of reliable reliable knowledge was the external authority which was revelation and revelation is in the biblical biblical framework now on top of the groundwork, on top of the ground zero, we have the foundation of the house. And we've already laid the foundation of the house as to what is our reference, what is, what is the go-to, what is the source of reliable knowledge. And now we're going to put up four columns, just like we did in the first house, which represent the basic beliefs of that house based on the source of reliable knowledge. So the, the first column that we have, number it, it's labeled number two, it, and it might be kind of confusing, it's the second element in the house, but it's the first column, first pillar, first basic belief. What is the first basic belief? The first basic belief, based on God's revelation, is the physical world does exist. Now in the previous house, that's what the, the basic rule was, the physical world does exist. But this one then goes on to say, but it is not alone. There exists also a spiritual world or spiritual dimension. Now how how do they justify that? How does this house justify that? Well, it's justified by their foundational source. Where do they get their reliable source of knowledge from? And so that is what in Genesis chapter 1 verses 1 and 2, that is what they base their beginning assumptions on. And it says, it reads, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was formless and void and darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the Spirit of God was moving over the surface of the waters. There we have a combination of the physical world being created and then ordered, but then the Spirit of God moving over the waters, which means that they aren't, in, in this thinking, two separate domains, and one exists and the other doesn't, or the two domains exist but don't overlap. Um, these are not two domains. They are one world that is physical and spiritual. So that is the first column. Second column, what does that represent? The second column represents the belief, and this is based on the revelation, God's revelation, is the cosmos consists of of both physical and spiritual elements. Okay, so the first one was domains. Are there two domains? No, there are not. There's only one domain in this one, and it is occupied by both physical and spiritual um, dimensions. And so then this one now is talking about elements. Okay, what exists in this 
rule or basic belief that comes from the scriptures is the cosmos consists of both physical and spiritual elements in a single domain. And that's based on Ephesians 6 verses 10 through 11. What that scripture indicates is that finally be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the full armor of God so that you will be able to stand firm against the schemes of the devil. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of this darkness against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. The, the author of this book, Paul, is instructing the readers who were Hebrews and Hebrew culture, finally be strong in the Lord. Put on the form of God that you may be able to stand against schemes that for our struggle is not against flesh and blood. Our struggle is not against the physical world but it's against spiritual dimensions or spiritual powers within that physical world. So that is pillar belief number two, is the elements, elements involved. On to number, number three. What does the number three tell us? Number three belief is that by God's revelation is the cosmos, how does it function? According to natural laws, no, it functions according to common processes, not, not natural processes, because it says that they were created and are now sustained by God himself. That's found in Colossians chapter 1, verses 16 and 17. And that says, For by him all things were created, both in the heavens and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions, or rulers or authorities all things have been created through him and for him he is before all things and in him all things hold together so he created all things he created powers dominions authorities he created the processes he created the world all things were created and he did not just create them according to this reference material and then go and shut the door and now it's a closed system. It's an open system that he continually sustains those same processes that he had created. So it's not just a, a machine that's working and functioning according to rules or, or, or laws, but in this way it is a, an organism that is alive. It is alive with the God that created it, that is fully involved in the process of it. Okay, last column. Okay, we have one, two, three, and four, the pillars, which are the basic beliefs. What are the basic beliefs in this system? Okay, pillar, the last one, is, is like in the first house, it's more of a wrap up and conclusion of the, the three pillars combined with the bottom um, foundational uh, reliable knowledge source. So what is this one? Number four is the creator God of the Bible exists. He does exist according to the parameters that have been chosen by this house. And those, uh, so w what, what is this creator God like? And that is found in Jeremiah chapter 10 verses 11 through 16. Now, it's kind of a long series here, but let's, let's take a look at it and just, just listen to what, what is the, the creator God of the Hebrew culture, what is he like? Okay, it says, Thus you shall say to them, The gods that did not make the heavens and the earth will perish from the earth and from under the heavens. It is he who made the earth by his power, who established the world by his wisdom and by his understanding. He has stretched out the heavens. When he utters his voice, there is a tumult of waters in the heavens, and he causes the clouds to ascend from the end of the earth. He makes lightning for the rain and brings out the wind from his storehouses. 
Every man is stupid, devoid of knowledge. Every goldsmith is put to shame by his idols, for his molten images are deceitful, and there is no breath in them. They are worthless, a work of mockery. In the time of their punishment, they will perish. The portion of Jacob is not like these, for the maker of all is he, and Israel is the tribe of his inheritance. The Lord of hosts is his name. It talks about the God of the Hebrews is involved in their world. Out of his storehouse, he pulls out the rain and the winds and the, and, and, and so in other words, they aren't natural processes. They are processes that are very common to us that we see on a daily basis, but maybe in this context, they say that is God. That is God that, that ordains, the God that controls, the God that has the storehouses full of him. So he is not a God that is remote. He is not a God outside of a closed system. He is a God that is present within a open system. And that is how a non-Western um, view of looking at and starting with their belt build, the ground system, and then going on to the the foundation and then going on to the um, the the pillars and the basic beliefs and that's what we have gotten up to now in the construction is the basic beliefs the four basic beliefs of this house and compared to the basic beliefs of of the western house the extreme western uh, cultural tendency house they are belief systems and they are assumed, they are believed to be true. And this house is what believes the basic beliefs of this house to be true. Thank you again for accompanying me. We're in, this is the, the second uh, lecture series in a, in a series of, of six on the non-Western house. Again, if you'd like to contact us, we're Tim and Holly Nyquist. And uh, you can either through the blog spot or, or through the, the email address that's listed. Thanks again for joining us.